uh, Costa Rica is a, a fascinating country and uh, the fact that this book has a substantial part of the story is set in Costa Rica, I think it will resonate with uh, European readers because Costa Rica is now becoming a center of uh, tourism, which was not the case a few years ago. Um, with cheaper air travel, people are going much further afield, and Costa Rica certainly is a place that is on the radar of people who are keen on ecology, on the environment, and people who love uh, the idea of going and visiting rainforests and protected areas, and Costa Rica has all of that. But the majesty and the splendor of uh, a verdant paradise set in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, that is Cocos Island, and a place which is uh, renowned as a place where uh, hammerhead sharks congregate in hundreds of thousands to breathe, uh, I thought gave an element of, of danger, of mystery. I could certainly see how I could wrap the story round and make it, um, well, not exactly Jaws 5 or 6, but something along those lines. I wanted to have that element of sunken treasure and uh, that was definitely behind me, behind my mind you know, when, I, uh, when I did that. I wanted it to be about that. And Costa Rica certainly is a place that I know and they always say, well, if you're going to write something, write about something that you know. <laughs> that was also very much at the forefront of my mind. Well, I, I would always describe uh, the Mary Deer as uh, Indiana Jones meets James Bond. It's uh, that kind of a thing. It's a romp, really. It's an adventure. It's pure escapism. It's got all the elements that you want in a novel that you can take to the beach and just read. And it will not tax the brain cells too much, but it will keep you entertained, keep you turning the pages, hopefully. In terms of the plot, really, it hangs around the uh, beginning of the, well, beginning of the war, and the fact that there are two great friends who happen to find themselves in the same regiment, more or less locked into the conflict, and that circumstances draw them into a situation where one of them acquires knowledge about looted German treasure. And he just so happens to also belong to a family that have historically had links to Costa Rica and a hidden treasure map. So here suddenly you find yourself with two treasures from different areas who happen to be in the same geographical area, i.e. Costa Rica and Cocos Island. And that gave me the lead to be able to take the leap into the uh, present time and present us with Elliot Shepard, an adventurer who finds himself in possession of both maps by a series of quirks and chance and off he goes in search of this treasure. It mixes beautiful women, um, exotic places, skullduggery, the White House, Downing Street, all the elements that you find in James Bond novels, uh, but with a sort of a different twist that is more Indiana Jones than James Bond.